I'm here at the Five Senses Garden. It is so beautiful here. I'm going to switch on my eyes to see, my ears to hear, my nose to smell, my hands to touch, and my mouth even to taste. I wonder where Kylie is. We're on a mission to find out what to plant at our place to attract little birds like superb fairy wrens and all kinds of other pollinators. Come with me. I feel very calm. It's a very beautiful space, it's quite pretty. And these grasses here, like that one, what's it called? That's called poa. Poa, and would it attract small birds? It would, the finches absolutely love the seed on that. What else could I plant if I wanted to attract small birds? Yeah, you could plant grevillea, you could plant some acacias, which are wattles, you could plant hakea, and also something called bassaria. Hey, is that waddle over there? It is. Let's waddle over. Okay. <laughs> so we have wattle over here. What is it about wattle, acacia, that the little birds love? This particular species, Acacia ulicifolia, has spikes, so it has little spines on it. It also has like a little yellow puffball flower. So insects are drawn to the flower for pollination. And then the little birds like the spiky plants because they can quickly scoot in there, they can fly in there if they think that there's a threat. And once they're in there, they're kind of like home and they're safe. <laughs> I love it. It's like they found their fortress. They get in there. Yeah. And then when they're ready, they go out again when yeah. they feel safe. And a lot of these birds are really quick moving as well. They need to be in order to get away from predators. So they need shelter that they can quickly zoom into. Mm, that's so cool. So they've worked out over time, they've evolved to know what habitat they need to move a certain way for their survival and for their thrival. I just made up that word. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and we can work with them to give them a place to live because there has been a loss of habitat, hasn't there? Yeah, there has been through land clearing and also animals like cats and dogs and foxes. They do exist in the urban environment. They're not just a myth. If someone has a cat or a dog that could be posing a threat to smaller birds in their neighborhood, one way that they could offset having a domesticated animal is by creating some habitat in their garden that will help keep the wilder birds safe. Yeah. I like that idea yeah. of offsetting. Yeah. And also responsible pet ownership. And what does that mean to you? That means having your dog on a leash where it is an on-leash area. It means having your pets registered, mm -hmm. dissexed, mm -hmm. microchipped, yep. and particularly with cats, having them inside of a night time because they are predators. That's such a great message, yeah. responsible pet ownership. Yeah. I dig it. Do the superb fairy wrens wear jewels like I think they do? <laughs> the, the males, when they're in plumage, are brightly coloured, so they're blue, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's just as good as wearing a necklace. Yeah. Better. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's like a natural sapphire. <gasps> wow, that yeah. sounds so special. Biodiversity of plants equals biodiversity of animals. Is that right? Yes. And we can plant different plants to attract a diversity of birds to our garden. Yeah, we can. We know that we can plant small, spiky grevilleas rather than the taller, bigger grevilleas. Yep. We know that we can plant different types of wattle and acacias. Yep. We know that we can plant that grass over there. Poa. Poa. What else am I missing? Maybe some ground covers. So they're often overlooked. Then there's the larger shrubs. And then of course there's trees. 
What kind of larger shrubs can we plant to attract the birds? Yeah, so a lot of the hakeas can get quite large. They are super spiky. And again, the small birds love the spiky um, leafed plant so they can quickly duck in there. So we know what we can plant. We know how we can behave. Do you love to just go outside and enjoy the habitat that you've cultivated? Every single day. <laughs> Me too. No matter where we are, we're always part of an ecosystem. Many ecosystems at once. By planting plants that little insects, little birds, big birds, lizards and creatures love. We can help them have a home, food, shelter, community, love, just like we want. After all, we're all one story. I can't wait for the superb fairy wrens to come and visit me at my place. I challenge you to plant a wildlife friendly garden at your house. The City of Canada Bay Council is doing the thinking for you. Visit the Backyards for Biodiversity website for information on how to create a garden to attract native birds or to share a photo of your wildlife friendly garden. <laughs>